Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your favorite chess journal YouTube channel. I hope all of you are doing great. And today, uh, thanks for tuning in uh, to this uh, YouTube channel, which is your favorite chess journal YouTube channel. And those of you who are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And those of you who have already subscribed, I can't thank you enough. I mean, you guys are the real hero uh, of my chess life. Uh, anyway, so today we're going to continue with this series of games for intermediate level players, as well as uh, one of the uh, subscribers to the channel, as well as my friend, has repeatedly requested me to play London System games, uh, marathon games, actually. So today we're going to uh, play London System games if allowed to. And I've logged into chess24.com, it's a beautiful site. Current, Mal current uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen is the owner of this uh, beautiful website. You guys could try it out. And I've also run a poll of which uh, opening should I play as a marathon game. Uh, and London System happens to come out on the top. And the second one is also is your, another... Uh, another favorite opening of yours, which is the Pierce defense or the Pack defense. So, well, London system opens with d4, and uh, uh, against whatever white replies, unless unless they play this one, uh, the England gambit, you play here the bishop f4. Although uh, w once you once you get to know these London system well then you could start playing like the way i play most often these days is like developing this knight first uh which is also indicating that uh, that i'm not sh showing my curse because the reason is when you play bishop f4 they know that they uh they know that um uh, you're gonna play the london system and they're gonna play the anti-london system uh, which is the best move the our opponent currently has played and this is the anti-london system this is also called the Steinitz counter gambit. And I, uh, if I play with black pieces, I guess d4, I usually play d5. And when they play bishop f4, I play this one the way our opponent is playing. So this is going to be uh, an interesting game as well. So uh, Frankie, the subscriber who has uh, requested me for marathon games, I hope you are going to learn a lot today. So we, regardless, I said regardless, whatever happens, we're going to continue with the London system fashion. So we're going to start creating this pyramid and where the Daskar bishop remains outside the pawn chain. Uh, you know, here they they have options like taking or developing their knights. I usually develop my knight, uh, the, but they have decided to take. Now we don't uh, necessarily have to take. We could give a uh, in betweener like a check. So let's do that first. See how they react. Um, they could play here or with the bishop. Both are actually good. So I'm I'm commenting, uh, commenting uh, from both the white end uh, or from the black end. So if you happen to play with the black pieces and you face London system, uh, how are you going to continue? So I hope this is going to be helpful. So we're gonna uh, capture the last card bishop, and they have decided to capture with the knight, and now uh, we there's no point of messing around. Let's capture the Central pawn, center pawn, ed4, or we could have taken with the queen, but the reason why I have taken here is that sooner we're going to play here, so our pawns are going to be aiming at their king side, which means a play is going to take place um, uh, against their king side. But before that, always remember that development is the priority. Now here in this case, um, uh, here in this case, uh, the the knight, because because of the fact that we're gonna we're going to attack on their king side, so we're gonna develop this knight here, uh, which also guards these pawns. So our queen is free of responsibilities of defending this pawn, although we're gonna uh, play here one day. Okay. That's kind of trippy. I mean, I didn't expect this one. I was expecting them to play here. Okay, anyway, it's their call. So, 
they want to fianchetto their Oscar bishop now uh, uh, now play let's play this one position is position is um, equal I should say or I must say uh, I mean both of the parties we both are actually uh, trying to uh, develop our pieces to their optimal scores here uh, another thing that you guys should uh, also remember is that sometimes they play here trying to chase, chase our dark square bishop so mm, in that case sometimes a flight square for the bishop is necessary to create but the question is whether uh, we do we do that or not the reason for these playing c3 is twofold one one is to guard this pawn another is to create this i mean open this path for our queen to attack this pawn so let's do that because we are not uh in an immediate immediate uh hurry to ca uh, castle here their best move is to actually play here queen b6 and uh, force us to I mean invite us to capture their queen uh, and in that case we could decide to capture or even not to capture or maybe we could develop this knight to here or even castle simple castle short and uh, invite them to capture us because we want our this file to open But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna attack on their king side. Um, so probably I'll I'll back my queen up. Yeah, they have played the best move. Um, or maybe not. Um, or. Okay, let's let's back up the queen, back it up, uh, one square. Queen C two. Depending on the uh, situation, you have the uh, flexibility to play the move orders in London system. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you guys. Oh, no, that's a good move. Uh, you guys should pick an op opening that has got a lot of potentials I mean uh, as well as easy to learn learn the system if you're an intermediate level player or even if you are a beginner level player uh, you could I even see advanced level players and super GMs they also play London system so they, this is a good opening it's not it had a reputation that is a boring opening but Gata Kamaski, the American Grandmaster and uh, World Champion Contender, let's develop this knight, uh, popularized this uh, London system setup. So they have castled, and here, whenever I see the Fianchetto, their uh, Dark Sky Bishop here, and then castle. I prefer to play h4 the aim is to play here one day but uh, so that if they take here then we're gonna open this line but before that we'll probably play here and they could stop this progression though I mean like they could play here or here chasing our task or bishop so our opponent is from uh, you can't see the flag is on the left side of the board and I have cut out for the sake of magnification is from uh, United States of America slightly slightly lower rated than us now they are trying to chase out Oscar Bishop here no point of backing our Bishop up here and blocking our Rooks Oi so let's uh, put it here uh, 
And one thing uh, is that I like about London system is that you do not have to necessarily remember a lot of the traps or things like that. I mean, uh, there are some uh, tricky traps in London system, but um, try playing it out and you will get to know of the traps and and then um, I mean if you want to try out a new opening you will see that uh, which happened to my cases in many occasions that I lose I don't know 30 50 even 70 rating points but then once you get used to of these uh, this opening then you'll even gain more. Say for, for example, you start playing London system by watching this video and then you keep, uh, then you start playing the system uh, on the uh, board or uh, online against your opponent and then you lose 30 points, then uh, as you mature, you're gonna, you'll see that you're gonna uh, gain 100 points. So which means that 100 minus 30, you have actually gained 70 points. So now, uh, that's a good move, but they have forgotten that uh, their queen is actually um, under discovery, so we can take this pawn. I hope they're not going to blunder. I don't know what kind of name is this. Uh, Diogenes Camus Libinis. I don't know. <coughs> There's no option of chatting. <coughs> or, or, or I guess here. Yeah. We have chatting option here. So okay, I just said good luck. Now all right, so they have decided to uh, uh, move the queen out of the fire and guard our uh, I mean attack our on uh, here we could <clears throat> we could defend uh, the pawn with this way but that is gonna block our life uh, I mean dark our bishops path right that is also going to give away the control of this square both square at the same time, that is like a juicy move, uh, can't resist to play. So they're going to take here, right? So what are we going to do in return? I mean, okay, this knight, if they take with that knight, we play here and then capturing with this knight we're gonna let go one of our knights yeah I like the look of that one because this knight is our bad knight why it is bad knight because it can't go here or here and this knight is is the better knight it could jump around here and this one this knight there this knight is kind of good it's stacking this one so yeah let's exchange try to exchange with this knight so we will be getting rid of our bad knight for their good knight <clears throat> although we we do not talk about a lot which one is bad knight or good knight we mostly talk about good bishops and bad bishops 
so as anticipated they have captured with their knight and uh, let's capture with our knight as well they have got options to capture with the queen or the bishop i guess capturing with the queen makes sense well i mean capturing with the bishop would make sense here because queen needs to uh, stay active in this square because i want to play this one <clears throat> clockwise speaking uh they're okay now they have see they have made a mistake they have given up this square and now let's uh, tag that knight and this pawn is also weak um, so now do we chase it away or grab this pawn a bit greedy though okay i'm gonna play here and then do this one get rid of their dosker bishop which is the main defender right yeah that seems to be a good idea so let's do that one now that knight is uh, jumping here so we gotta watch out this weak pawn okay they have decided to jump there that's not a good jump um Or maybe it is because if we chase their queen, they're gonna put the queen here and shoo, that's terminal. Hmm, so not yet. So let's not do that one yet. So, candidate moves. Um, Castling surely is, Castling long surely is the best move here, I guess. Now we're gonna open up their uh, king side, so this is gonna be a good game, I believe. We gotta watch up this, uh, watch out this pawn push, though. I mean, like we we need to keep one of our pieces here uh, to guard this pawn push. Uh, now we've got a um, couple of moves to play. First, I kind of like getting. Okay, what is that move doing? They they have created a battery here, right? Uh, okay, you know what? I'm gonna play here and target both of these pawns. Yeah, multi-purpose move. Remember, we talked about it one uh, one of our latest videos. That's a multi-purpose move. So if they play here, we gonna get this pawn. Okay, I see that they have a fork here, but our bishop is there right in time. Uh, but we could even uh, ignore that, uh, tag the queen first. No, attacking the queen first wouldn't be a good idea because our bishop is loose. So, yeah, let's take the knight. Okay, so after all these transactions, there is no point of taking this pawn now because our bishop is under fire. Now let's take let's. Now is the time to capture this pawn. <clears throat> so this pawn is not going away. And we make sure that this pawn is remain. This pawn is guarded.
Okay, now they're good to see that they are thinking. We also have this one. If you want to liquidate with one of their rooks, a lot of moves. Fortunately enough, they don't have a life square bishop, so that they would have a threat on these or these two squares. Remember that in one of our uh, latest videos, we talked about squares, the importance of uh, thinking from the perspective of squares. So they have decided to play queen to f3. Uh, now we could actually... Um, I don't know, what is their plan? Um, first, we need to ask, what is their plan? So what do they want to do with this one? Okay, probably they want to take here, right? Yeah, I see now. So that is their plan. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's a tactical plan, right? They want to... Do you guys see this one? They want to uh, take with their bishop uh, this pawn. And if we recapture with our pawn, then they have this check winning our queen. Oh, you cheeky, cheeky bastard. All right. Okay, let's chase the queen away. Now they they could probably go after uh, our pawn here, the weak pawn. Okay, as anticipated, they are running after our pawn. Hmm. Let's tuck the king out of that thing because king safety is always a priority. And had that had this been a shorter time control game, I would have taken the risk. But this is a longer time control game, and they are clockwise speaking, they're doing better than us. So there's no point of uh, taking, trying to take unnecessarily unnecessary risk. And if you guys can hear any background noise, I'm sorry for that. Um, um, early today here recording this video and, and it's daytime and there are as I live in the city there are a lot of noise out there although the uh, microphone that I'm using happens to cancel out the background noises but sometimes if you can if you turn up the volume you would see that you could hear some um noise so they are uh, actually trying to they are they're they're sticking on with their plans right this plan Okay, in chess, always remember that uh change of plans is a common thing if you're an intermediate level player. Don't stick to one one plan. I mean, they are sticking into one plan. This sacrificing their bishop that looks like cool on the surface, but this plan doesn't work here because we have tucked our king out of these discovery uh, or this sacrifice potential sacrifice, and they don't have any immediate checkmate. So change of plans is a very good thing. Uh, now. Instead, let's come up with a counter play. Let's take this pawn, and this is a counter blow. So we are welcoming their uh, sacrifice.
and let's see what they do. Uh, we could also take with this rook because this rook is not being targeted by any of our enemy pieces. Yeah, see, I told you guys that they are uh, they are uh, sticking with their uh, only plan, plan that they found out. Uh, good for them, but we are even better than them. So first, we're gonna give this check. Not not taking. Oops, make sure that I don't make any mouse slip. Not taking with this rook because that doesn't come with a check. So let's give a check first. We know win material first and then we will uh, decide what to do because we can we have this check with our Dalskar Bishop and this rook is guarded so they cannot take this uh, uh, rook uh, Uh, sorry, I'm just uh, calculating. Uh, is that necessary? I mean, like playing here, playing here. Instead, if what if I capture here, right? Their rook needs to be constantly there. Because if the rook, oh, okay, if the queen takes here, if the queen, let's set a trap, actually. If the queen takes here, we have this check, right? Okay, let's set a trap. See if they okay, so they didn't notice, and that's this is counter tactics we came up with, and we found it just in time. So they have uh, resigned. Shoo, that was a very good game. Uh, thanks uh, to our opponent. Okay. So this is the first game that we have played for uh, with London system. Okay, let's quickly go through the moves. So series of London system games, and uh, this is the first game that we played played in this series although in 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 our channel if we uh if we go back to the playlist we will see in the longer long play games games we will see a lot of other london system games but as an intermediate level player uh this is the series of games that we have played today so let's quickly review the game we opened with d4 they played d5 then the bishop f4 move and this is a typical setup, London system setup, and they uh, counter our London system. This is the way you should play uh, if you face London system on board. Um, challenging this pyramid, we stick to building our pyramid, and they have taken. Oops, where are we? Where were we? Okay. Although developing their knight here could have been played, I mean, putting pressure here, not cashing out. So we have uh, immediately instead of capturing their uh, pawn, we have played. We have uh, given a check. The intermezzo or in betweener, they have decided to block with their light square bishop, and we. Captured the light square bishop. The next move was a recapture with the knight, and then we recaptured with our pawn. Although capturing with the queen was playable, but this looks better because we wanted to create a pawn chain like this that's aiming towards their king side because uh, play is gonna take place in the king side. Okay, knight f6, uh, knight gf6, and then knight e2. Uh, that, this one, I must say that playing here uh, was also possible, but this one has a lot of potentials, potentials, because we wanted to roll these pawns out and play this knight here, developing our queen here, castle long. So 
So that's that was uh, my strategy uh, at the back of my head. So I developed this knight here. That knight also guards this pawn, and also this dark card. Bishop. We we talked about uh, uh, the importance of defended pieces. The, those are defended to each other. The importance of that and undefended pieces are always uh, a target or prone to any kind of uh, tactical blow. So what they did, they played g6. I uh, didn't expect them to play here. From this, I guess, move number 7, they started playing a bit fishy. Uh, they have uh, given the game almost like in our hands because uh, if i were black uh, and have i seen here the opponent with the white pieces playing like this i knew would have would have known that they are going to attack us in the king side so i would have probably i don't know uh, probably played here and here the developing the doscar bishop here anyway uh the game continued c3 uh we do not necessarily employ our pieces for the sake of only defending our pawns. Pawns are defenders to other pawns. I mean, good defenders to other pawns. The best defenders to other pawns, I must say. Not the pieces. So they played uh, bishop g7. And here we played, we talked about this uh, multipurpose move. Uh, the queen is uh, pressuring here as well as attacking this pawn and in response they played queen b6 that was the best move and we decided to tuck our queen one square back by playing queen c2 they played rook c8 uh, pressure down this file that was also a good move and we developed our remaining knight and they castled, and here we played h4. And if you have, uh, I don't know, guys, if you have seen any of my uh, short videos, I mean, bullet games that I post here, uh, you will see that often in, in this kind of position. Oh, not often. I always tend to push this pawn, h4. My plan is to open their king up. ASAP. So they played knight h5, blocking as well as attacking. That was a good move again. And we took to our bishop, dosk our bishop back. Uh, and this one was a dubious move. Uh, the first inaccurate move, I believe. Uh, I don't see any point of them playing here, right? Trying to open up. If you want to play here, then make sure that your queen is not in under fire so they forgot to calculate that one so they made a big mistake here and that gives us uh, an opportunity or chance to attack on their queens the queen is under fire so queen has to move queen comes to e6 and now we we talked about this getting rid of our bad knight and knights are gone here again they played uh, an inaccuracy because the queen's position let's go back queen was doing what guarding this square right so taking with the da square bishop would have allowed them to still keep an eye on this square but they decided to take with the queen and we take we took the chance immediately and in in the game of chess uh, chess you always look for these chances and make sure that you don't let go of any of the chances and uh, as the horsey was uh, horsey was attacked it went back to f6 square and we further challenged it and it jumped here and we had to remain cautious with this weak pawn and luckily our bishop was there guarding this pawn so there is no fork and they lined up their rook uh, down this file they played well I must say they played well uh, if we ignore those uh, crucial mistakes here we again played the multi-purpose move uh, aiming on these two weaknesses notice that we are waiting to capture this pawn uh, 
uh, not yet. We could have uh, captured this pawn a lot, lot earlier. But remember, in one of our videos, we talked about timing. That was not the time to take this pawn. So timing is very, very important. Okay. So we wait until we see that is the best time to capture the pawn. Now they they uh, attacked uh, both of our rooks, so we had to capture and they uh, capture our knight. And now is the time to capture this pawn. So here, material I mean pawn was speaking. Both of us have the equal pawns, but they have this weak pawn and this weak pawn. But here, all of our pawns are guarded. So all these things really matters. Uh, I mean, as you progress with your games, the uh, setting up targets, and you'll see that it will improve uh, a lot of your games. So they played queen f3, and wow, I mean, thankfully that, thankfully we, we saw the move. Uh, always ask yourself, what is the plan? I mean, what is the move doing or not doing? These two questions to yourself and analyze them. I mean, like this move on the surface, it looks like, ah, uh, it's a nothing move. But hang on a second. Uh, a vicious blow is right around the corner. So they are about to sacrifice one of their pieces, which in this case they are ask our bishop. Here their rook is lining up against our king. And you could ask me the question, how did I see this one? Okay, here is the answer, puzzles. If you have done puzzles, I mean chess.com, leeches, they've got cool puzzles. I prefer leeches because uh, I cannot afford uh, to become a premium member of chess.com. So that's why I prefer leeches. And if you if you solve puzzles, uh, these this is kind of like more than 2,000 rated puzzles, uh, I guess. So if I'm not wrong, where the king is being lined up in one of your opponent's heavy pieces, I mean major pieces. This is a major piece, this is a major piece, right? This is a minor piece. <clears throat> so here uh, they have a potential discovery uh, of giving a check. So if they take, okay, let's see this on board. Uh, say for example, we play a random move something like here no we cannot play this one okay we play here then they would have taken this pawn okay are you guys with me i believe you are and then we we have we have to have we have two options i mean either to capture or not to capture so if we capture then what happens they take this pawn gives a check and then winning our queen okay what happens after taking we do not capture we have to talk our king right to get out of any potential checks then they would have like uh, <clears throat> you know one upon and probably uh, probably uh, I don't know I mean yeah, probably they, they could have gone back or, you know, some other, maybe maybe here, trying to, trying to root their bishop like this way. That could have happened. And by that, what would have they achieved? They would have uh, achieved a less safer king than theirs. In that case, our king would, have, would, would, would not be that safe than them so that's why we played here to f1 
attacking their queen so they don't have again timing they don't have time to capture this pawn because their queen is under fire so they took their queen and attacking our h3 pawn and what did we play in uh, in response so we are letting go this pawn okay we are we have played safety first move king to b1 then notice that they have played rook to e2 not taking this pawn they played well here but the problem is that <clears throat> they have they have fixed all their eyes into one plan so in in the game of chess i mean especially when you are like you know 1500 plus don't stick to one plan maybe if you are a beginner level player 1100 1200 1300 maybe sticking to one plan maybe that works but as you progress with your rating with the plan of like 1300 i mean uh, rating with 1300 plus or should i say 1500 plus yeah let's talk about 1500 okay if you are 1500 plus and then sticking to one plan is not going to work so change of plans change of plans is a very crucial thing so they are actually what well, they're uh, aiming into one plan so that's why they're they have played here and they are trying to set up this thing uh, that we uh, recaptured, uh, and they have uh, they have keep they have kept their queen here on this line. The rook is here. Everything is pointing out to our king. Okay. So what did we play uh, played in uh, play in return in response? We played a counter attacking move. So as discussed, they should have addressed this one instead they stick to their own plan and captured okay here we didn't fall for the trap or what we did we came up with a counter-attacking blow and the king has to respond to king h8 and then we set up a trap now we have taken so this was their initial plan, right? Taking with the queen and coming up here, or maybe here, yeah, maybe here. That was their initial plan. So we saw this plan in ahead, two, three moves ahead, and we set up a trap because we knew that you know psychology, as Judith Polgar, Judith Polgar had said, has said in one of her uh, interview that chess is like seventy uh, percent uh psychology so we read their mind we knew that they are sticking uh, into one plan so we set up a trap of our own and they fall and they have fallen for the trap and they have taken this pawn and boom this check wins the wins the queen so they ha they have no other option but to give give up their queen and or our Rook is here to protect the back rank. Unfortunately, our king is here on this square. So they don't have, had our had our king been in this square, then probably they would have any kind of checkmate thing or something like that. But yeah, well played uh, uh, by our opponent. So uh, I thank you very much for tuning in and staying up until this. Let me know, guys, down down in the comment section below. How do you like this marathon series of games? We, I mean, series of games we play with London system opening. And yeah, and those of you who haven't subscribed this channel, please, please, please make sure to subscribe. And I have YouTube has already notified me that uh, about only 15 percent of the viewers to my channel are subscribed and remaining 85 percent are not sub sub subscribed and i was like okay maybe i'm not coming up with uh, enough uh, cool contents to uh, make at least 50 percent viewers to subscribe my channel but I'm trying my best, you know, uh, I'm trying my best and I'm not a master, uh, but I have progressed on my own and sharing my knowledge and thoughts with you guys. So till the next time, till we play the game number two, 
with the learner system please make sure to stay put and let me know your comments down below so i'll see you guys in the next time and the next game take care of yourself bye bye